<clears throat> okay, good evening. Welcome back to the Wiz Garage. This is going to be number 10 of Project Spray Guard, and it's going to be the final one or two, I think. I did predict it's going to be 10 videos, but probably a little bit more. Um, now that I'm at number 9 last, and this is the 10th, I can still see there's a bit more to do. There's going to be at least two more. Now, also with shifts this week, I can't do one every day. I have done so far, but tomorrow I'm busy, and but I should be able to get something up on Thursday night. Friday I'm definitely busy. Uh, and the weekend will be the next one after that. So it'll be the usual back to every other day. Hope you don't mind too much. Uh, the everyday thing's been cool, but it's been a bit of a punishing schedule. Getting it uploaded, getting it edited, getting your comments answered, which is extremely important to us. Um, that's taken just about all of the time we have. So we've got some stuff that's kind of backed up on us slightly, and we need to do that tomorrow night. But tonight, we're free, and I'm going to get probably the major last bit of construction done. It's simply the task of now that the three pieces, the two side panels and the mudguard itself are in one lump. Now the whole thing, the whole assembly is one big girt lump. It's going to come off the bike. I've got to slot the mounting holes. Loads of people have asked what's going to happen when you back the wheel up to tension the chain. It's going to hit the mudguard. Quite correct. Very perceptive. Love to see you watching. Glad to see you paying attention. All I'm going to do is I'm going to make the mounting holes into slots forward and that means that the whole thing can slide backwards and it doesn't need much. There is probably three quarters of an inch gap at the minute and that's added where it is. So I'll just put half an inch more and if ever it gets close, I'll just put a little bit more in the future. I don't want to put go at big slots because then it's floppy around the mountings and I don't want that. Nothing worse than something being floppy around the mountings. So today is going to whip it off and drill those holes a bit further forward. Stay tuned. That's what we're going to do tonight. And then finally, hopefully when that's done, we could be ready for paint. That could be it. And once the paint's on and it's fitted, we're good to go. Right, okay, let's get it off. Let's make those holes in the slots. Right. Now I'm kind of, kind of expecting when I undo this and take it off for the whole thing to go spang to come out and be in different directions, purely because the amount of tack welds on that. There's about 50 odd tack welds that I've done since this was one piece on its own. And that's a lot of tack welds and each one has an effect on slightly distorting the overall item. And if it stays in one piece, uh, if it stays in one shape like this, I shall be rather pleased, but I'm convinced it won't. We shall see. If it stays in the shape that it's in now, and it all stays right next to its mountains, I should be very pleased because it shows that maybe now that ain't too bad. Talk too soon. I expected that to go dang out here, but not at all. It's a little bit rotated ever so slightly, but that's nothing. Cool, let's get the other side. Assembly. So all I've got to do tonight is make these holes into slots so that the whole assembly, if I need to move it backwards, can just be slid back. Only needs to be by the width of the hole, nothing much more, just to give it that. And also the whole thing does sit very slightly to the right. So if I just adjust that one side back very slightly more than the other, it will give me perfect symmetry, and that's essential. Right, let's get the work made out. Right, all I need to do to make a slot is to drill another hole, the same size as that hole, absolutely as close as possible, and then just use a round file and go between them with it. So, eight mil drill. Coming as close to that hole, but without encroaching into it. That way when the drill goes through, it won't bias itself that way. Okay, do a square around the drill where you want it. So literally you make a square box 
around that drill and then you cut through it corner to corner that way corner to corner that way and where they cross is your center punch that's exactly in the middle which is see that angle there can you just lift that okay, just hold that gently you didn't welcome me back <laughs> i'll do that in a sec right Sorry, I have been remiss. Welcome back, Penny, to Delwood's Garage. <laughs> I'm not working. What's it like to be back in the garage? Mm. Behind the garage? <laughs> mm. <laughs> have you ever had that, boys? There's so much in that little noise, isn't there? Mm. It's a bit like, yes, dear, it's lovely. Sorry, right. I'm thinking horn. Right, I'll show you that again, just in case. You ever want to know exactly where the center punch goes? Put the drill exactly where you want the hole to be the back end of the drill then just scribe a square across one edge across the other side so all four sides you just do with a flat bladed screwdriver and you make a square and then that square just go corner to corner Where they cross, that's your centre punch mark. That's it. Probably not going to be able to get that in there too easy. That's it. Okay, that's the aim. Two holes, shoulder to shoulder, right next to each other, but no slipping in. And I'll just file those in in a sec. And this is thicker because I beefed this up with this plate, so it's got quite a bit to go through. for the center punch. Excellent, one slot. Now I can adjust it back by easily enough. Right, four more to do. Okay, each one now has enough adjustment for if I need to move it back. And if I need more in the future, it's easy just to file it. Mounts. Right, little test fit.
obviously when it finally gets fitted I shall use nuts, uh, washers, do the bolts the right way around so that there's, uh, there's no, ex I don't want too much bolt on the inside where it might catch the chain or anything so it will be addressed in due course. Right, that now gives me about three quarters of an inch of craft movement there and that is if that's back now it's aftermost there's enough room there now to get hand up inside which is well more than enough and a little bit too far away actually so remember when you adjust the wheel on your bike you never adjust it by much the maximum from the beginning to the end of the chain life like I said in the last video is no more than an inch uh, it certainly shouldn't be even on these longer chains like this this is a 133 link chain normal bandits 102 103 as far as I know can't remember exactly but it's this is 30 percent roughly longer and it still doesn't stretch any more than about an inch since I've had this chain in here it hasn't been adjusted back more than about three quarters of an inch so that's enough that's fine right so all I need to do now now I know that's that's a dry build if you make anything you build and, and fabricate anything whether it be a simple little piece of crit kit like this or whether it be a complete bike a chopper a whole full off frame up build manufacture the frame right from the bottom even then it's the same drill you have to do a dry build a dry build is simply where you build it you bolt it together tight you make sure everything works in some, in some cases you even take the whole thing for a test ride you'll see the chopper builders um, like Fenland choppers and stuff if you watch their videos they'll build a bike all in bare metal fire it up and ride it around their industrial estate sometimes even MOT it and then bring it back to the workshop deconstruct everything, take it all apart, and then it all goes out to be painted, powder coated, chromed and polished. And then when it's reassembled, you know everything fits. That's the most important thing. No point in painting everything, get it lovely, and then find out when you come to put it together, you've got to start cutting and filing and rewelding stuff because you're just wasting money, time and effort. So that's the dry build done on that. Um, all I've got to do now is get the um, get some putty into the welds. That's now as adjustable as it needs to be. Again, like I said, if I need more adjustment later on, I can just file them a bit longer, but I don't think I ever will. That's absolutely fine. Right? Oh my God. It's I the 5th of November, this file. Fucking God. Incoming! Right, oh it's 5th of November, there's fireworks everywhere, so we're out of it in here. Take it easy, let's get the next right, one done. That's unfortunately it for tonight. As I said at the beginning, I've got different shifts this week. Um, a little bit awkward so that's all I'm gonna to have to do for tonight but I've got the slots drilled in now and I now know that this fits works does the job and will serve the purpose I've got to wait for my number plate it's gonna take uh, a couple of days uh, coming from a good friend Wayne and all I'm gonna do between now and then is just give that some thought whether I'm just gonna paint it or whether I'm gonna put a um, some resin over it somebody mentioned one of you guys mentioned uh, scrimming over this bit um, yeah, I could do, but I think before I do anything like that, I'm going to just put a coat of paint over it because I think that's important. I may spray just a quick coat over. Um, spray paint sticks quite well to bare metal if you just lay it up properly. But again, brush, blackboard paint, you know me, I love it. That's how it should be. And obviously the other side of it is putting, um, I think where all these welds are, I want to get lots of blackboard paint right in under them to protect it long term because the great stuff blackboard paint. Blackboard paint is formulated to go rock hard uh, so that when you write on it with chalk it doesn't scratch. If you get regular ordinary paint and you write on it and it was on a board you put scratches in it all the time because chalk itself is quite quite hard and that in that sense the paint goes hard which is why you get this indestructible coating on the scrim. Uh, so I think that will be enough. I was going to putty those in um, but I'm not going to because I don't think I need to. I do like the look of the welds and all the welds showing. It's quite rat, that's what it's about. Slots are done, it moves, it adjusts. I can set that when it goes on the bike and I do the final build and it's painted and it's ready to rock. I can put it on and I can set the exact angle and get all the symmetry correct and then it'll be nuts, bolts, washers, get everything completely tightened up um, and ready to go. Simple as that. So that was all it was for today, just prepping it for paint. And like all these things, as I said at the beginning, these little devils in the detail, as they say, the end of any project takes longer than the other three quarters. It really does. Um, so all this messing about, fiddling and dressing, we've been at this an hour already, and we've, been, mm. uh, and we've got to get some stuff done now. So take it easy. Thanks for watching this one. Ride safe. This has been number 10. We'll see you the next one for the paint.